Hello, I'm Lori Steiner, sitting in for Armin Butish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll make it our policy to help you understand your health care coverage. Then, your married mates. Should you also be partners in property? We'll offer advice. We'll examine important information about annual OBGYN exams. Plus, we'll introduce you to Charles Ramsey, the man who opened the door to freedom for three women held captive for a decade. And has your widowed or divorced partner been targeted by a gold digger? It's time to get you going, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. With warmer weather, doesn't a summer smoothie sound delicious? And what better way to drink to your health? Smoothies can be refreshing and delicious and offer a great way to incorporate fruits and vegetables into your diet. Cindy Baylog and Adam Wilson are here to whip up some examples that not only taste great but are good for you. Cindy is the Health and Wellness Coordinator for Medical Mutual of Ohio and Adam is the Senior Culinary Manager at Vitamix. So welcome to the show, two Thank of you. you. So we're sitting, we're going to start talking to you first a little bit about um, how smoothies fit in with, with uh, Medical Mutual's commitment to good health. Sure. Thanks, Lori. You know, uh, healthy eating and good nutrition are essential components to a healthy lifestyle. And it's really important that our members take an active role in their health, doing things like getting exercise, eating healthy, reducing stress. Um, so it's great, really, to partner with clients like Vitamix to share this information. Okay. Well, now, smoothies are good, and they usually have fruit, yogurt, maybe a little protein powder. Is there some way that we can make a smoothie even more nutritious? <laughs> sure. Well, you know, not all smoothies are healthy. So it's important to take a look at the calories, the fat, the sugar that's included, um, and really just digest what's included in the smoothie. Um, and, you know, also keep in mind that smoothies are a great vehicle for incorporating vegetables that you normally wouldn't eat on your own. Um, so when you look at uh, what's included, you want to stay away from things like ice cream or whole milk and maybe try non-fat yogurt. Um, but the bottom line is you want to focus on fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, and uh, good sources of protein. All right. So, Adam, you've got your Vitamix. They're ready. Yes. So what are you going to make for us today? Um, we are going to make a hint of mint green smoothie. So our company's on whole food nutrition so that we can try to pack in a punch with our smoothies. So we have our water. We have green grapes. We have pineapple chunks. We have our mint. So our mint adds our really refreshing flavor to it for the summer. We have our spinach, and then we have some ice just to finish it off. So just a really healthy, intense flavor on this. I'm gonna turn it on, then bring it up the tray. Mm -hmm. Then turn this off. And so we have a really nice, refreshing drink for us in the morning, afternoon, dinner time. So now I'll pour us some. <laughs> it's one of those green drinks. <laughs> yes. Um, our company's been around for 92 years, so we've been trying to push our, our message of this healthy drinks and healthy mm. food and flavor for us. It's everybody. actually pretty good, yeah. Oh, it definitely is. That's <laughs> what we're here for. <laughs> Healthy doesn't always mean I like the good. mint. It, oh, that's really true. Yeah. It's really and good. So. And that's a mindset I have to change even. Yes. <laughs> Taste so. is all about everything. So. so what are some of the other options for healthy smoothies? So we like mixing and matching. So on a green smoothie, you find a smoothie that you like, and then you can mix and match with it. So the proportions of water and liquid to the solids are good. So you can mix kale, which is a very dense, um, really caloric, and really um, high in nutrients um, ingredient that you can add instead of spinach so you can get more nutrients packed in there so those types of things of learning mixed different fruits take your favorite things that you like you know and then blend it up and try those and mix and match find your find your your smoothie of choice and then you can go with it daily or you know mix it in two three times a day we love people using our Vitamixes daily <laughs> <laughs> of course. And it's good for you. So, And Cindy, where can folks find more information about 
healthy tips and things from Medical Mutual? Well, they can go to our website to find health articles and information, and they can also like us on Facebook to get different types of nutrition and oh, uh, they can be a Facebook tips. fan. They huh? can be, yep, yeah, that sounds great. And post their, their new recipes <laughs> yes. for smoothies yes. on that. So, um, as Connie and Adam have shown, a few simple s s uh, swaps can make your smoothie drink not only delicious but nutritious. Depends on what you put in it. So toast, then taste. My thanks to Connie and Adam for joining us today. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting their website, www.medmutual.com slash 2014 options, or call 1-866-488-3266. Next, should you co-own everything? But first, horse racing history often honors the legendary winner, Man o' War, and his stable of statistics reveal why. Man o' War was the first to cross the finish line in 20 out of 21 races from 1919 to 1920. So what other horse won that race? Hint, his name fits his fate. We'll track down the answer when we return. My husband and I got into the car and we couldn't do it. We couldn't pick one baby over the other. Coming to Macho changed the entire pregnancy. We actually started to become happy with, with our situation. We owe a big thank you to Metro. I can't imagine our family without Sam. Log on to DealChicken.com to save 50 to 90% off. Wonderful Northeast Ohio businesses are waiting for you, from restaurants to spas and everything in between. At the Sanford Memorial in Saratoga, New York in 1919, Man of War was denied an undefeated record by an upstart named appropriately Upset. After a bad start, Man of War made up for lost time and was neck and neck with his nemesis at the finish line. But upset, upset his rival's race record and won by a nose. You and your spouse are both entitled to your investments, but should both of you be on the title of your investments? The wrong answer could be costly in term of taxes, terms of taxes. Here to spell out the option of a TOD is J-I-M. Jim Lineweaver, a certified financial planner with the Lineweaver Financial Group. So welcome again to the show. Thanks for having me. So most couples, when they have assets and investments, they have both names on them. Mm -hmm. And that means so when the first spouse dies, the ownership automatically transfers to the surviving spouse. I mean, isn't that just the easiest way to do it? It can be. And on checking account, savings account, having joint tenants with rights of survivorship can make the most sense and give the easiest transfer and quick access to that money. But when it comes to your investment accounts or any asset that can appreciate in value, uh, maybe like a stock or a brokerage account and sometimes real estate, it may make sense to use a transfer on death registration in debt. Instead, it still avoids probate, but a huge difference on the tax side. Okay, so we're talking about capital gains tax here, correct? Yeah, and how this works is for capital gains, you know, let's say you had a stock account and if you sell those stocks within 12 months, it's, that's taxed at a personal income rate. So you do have to be careful. These are things that would be have to be held for greater than 12 months because people that are right now in the 10 or 15 percent marginal income bracket, there is zero capital gain mm. tax. And then when you jump up, it, it, we're in a marginal bracket society, so the higher income you make, but then what ends up happening is the more you're going to pay in capital gains. But there is no gain gains until you hit that 25% marginal income break. Okay. So there's some huge opportunities here. All right. So using this transfer on death, TOD, designation on the account, that can help avoid this tax? Yeah, it really can. Because what, And we have some actual examples for your viewers because what we really want to do is try to take advantage of that zero capital gain. So let's say you have two couple or a couple they are married and the, hus the husband passes away. And they had $100,000 and let's say the stock, they only paid $20,000 for it. They have an $80,000 capital uh, gain exposure. And if they owe the asset jointly, the husband dies, the wife wants to sell it, she's going to pay 15% capital gain 
gain tax or $12,000 that she's going to lose on that investment. Now, if they would have just registered that differently or titled that account differently, and let's say they just had it in his name, and this would be the second example, let's say all the numbers are the same. Paid $20,000 for the stock, it's worth $100,000 today, the husband dies, now it's transfer on death registration to the wife, and she takes ownership of it now after he passes. She sells the stock, she will pay zero capital gain tax, and there and also no income tax, as long as she's collectively still in that 15% marginal bracket mm -hmm. or less. So you virtually save $12,000 on the same asset. And that's really because when they both own it and the basis is so low, she has to pay tax on that difference. But what's then if he leaves it to her TOD? Yeah, transfer on death. So step up in basis? Exactly. So what ends up happening is so if like you and I were married and I left you that stock, that transfer on value, there's something in the estate tax rules that say that a stock will get a full step up, or real estate does too, full step up in value at the date of death. So that $20,000 cost basis magically becomes 100000 You sell it no potential tax. Wow, that's great information. You and your spouse may be joined at the hip, but maybe your investment shouldn't be. To see how investment titling could affect your taxes, give Jim a call. His number's coming up next. For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or Click to www.lineweaver.net. Next, PAP tests and more. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. For a change of pace, skip the walk in the park and take a walk in the art. Every third Friday of the month, 78th Street Studios throws open its doors for an art-filled open house complete with munchies and music. Enjoy eclectic architecture, dynamic displays, and funky furniture. To draw out more details, dial 216-272-4745 or delve into www.78thstreetstudios.com. For women, there's an annual appointment that they may want to avoid, but it's extremely important for evaluating their womanly well-being. Dr. William Todia is here with the checklist for that vital checkup. Dr. Todia is the Vice Chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Metro Health. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Lori. So of course we're talking about the yearly OBGYN appointment uh, that many women don't want to go to, but what's right. involved in that exam? So the exam involves, from, from our focus, from a gynecologic focus, a full breast exam and a pelvic exam, which is an examination of the, the, the vaginal tissues, the cervix, the uterus, and the ovaries. Okay. And then in addition, we're, we do less exam, but of the abdomen and, and other areas of concern. Okay. Um, now, is a pap smear always a part of the annual exam? It's not um, anymore. For many years, it was kind of synonymous with the annual GYN checkup. But what we've learned over the last 10 to 20 years is that, um, thankfully, cervical cancer decreases with age. And so we've been able to um, decrease the frequency of pap tests. Um, and we've also learned a lot about that HPV, which is a virus, is, is the primary driver and cause of cervical abnormalities in cervical cancer and so we've been able to incorporate that testing with pap tests oh. in order to then decrease how often it has to be done. So one good thing about growing older, yeah, <laughs> less testing right. for that. That's now right. when a pap smear is performed, what's involved exactly in that procedure? So a pap smear is done with, um, we have to see the cervix which involves placing a speculum um, to see the cervix and then we use a, a tiny brush to um, to to swab the cervix for the, the, what we're looking at is, or we're trying to get are the cells on the outside of the cervix. So there's a little spatula and a little brush that touches the outside of the cervix. Okay. So you're testing the cervix for the cancer and then right. th that HPV virus you mentioned? Correct. And it can be, and it's done 
together or can be done together in the same same specimen, same same technique, so it doesn't require a different test and okay. you wouldn't know any different in the exam whether okay, or it's doing not two both. things. No, it's not two <laughs> things. It does not take more time, it's not more painful. All right, that's so. a good thing. So I, I of course if a woman has any questions that they have about themselves, their body, any abnormalities or anything, they're gonna bring them to the appointment. Correct. But aren't there a list of questions that the physician also asks the woman? Yes, so in, in women who are in their 50s and 60s, but um, we're focusing on, on different things than women who are coming for childbirth or in their reproductive um, childbirth years. So we're interested in, in periods, and, and usually after 51 or so, most women go through menopause and the periods stop. Mm -hmm. But then we're, um, we ask whether there's any bleeding or abnormal bleeding, because that could be a sign of an abnormality. Um, we focus on breast health and breast exam and breast masses and most, and annual mammograms, we focus on um, then are there other problems with urinary symptoms because those tend to increase with time and age um, and also menopausal symptoms. So after menopause, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, those things also can be an issue so we ask about those symptoms. All right, sounds like a pretty comprehensive and specialized review. So women, we know that it may not be your favorite appointment <laughs> to make, but having a gynecological exam once a year is time well spent to take care of your health. My thanks to Dr. Todia for taking the time to be with us today. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or visit www.metrohealth.org. Next, he answered the call and saved three lives. It's time to get up and go, an exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hey everybody, it's Mike Carvin from Breakout Fitness. Today we're here to show you how to do an exercise band abduction. This is going to work the muscles in the outer thighs. These muscles are very important because not only do they help us get around and move, but should we stumble, those are the muscles that are going to help catch us. You ready to go? Yeah, this Let's is necessary. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to grab the band here. We're going to stand in the center of the band with our feet together. We want to make sure we're standing nice and tall. Let our hands hang to the side and we're simply going to open wide and take one step to the side and then bring the feet together. Okay, so one big step, bring them together. Now let's go back the other way a couple steps, switch, bring them together. Now it's important to control the movements. Okay, you want to make sure you use slow and controlled movements. Don't let your legs bang together. How are you feeling? Feels pretty good. Good? You have stronger legs already, huh? Yes, I do. All right, everybody. 12 to 15 repetitions, two to three sets. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. We live in an age of instant celebrity, where you can be famous for just being famous. But once in a while, someone becomes an instant celebrity for a good reason, a right reason. That's what happened to Charles Ramsey when he kicked in Ariel Castro's front door and led three kidnapped women to freedom. Charles has detailed the story behind the headlines in the book, Dead Giveaway, and we're happy to have him join us here today. Thank Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Well, it's been over a year since Amanda Berry and Gina Jesus and Michelle Knight were rescued. Is your life any different now than it was before that happened? Uh, yes and no. No because it's uh, my life and I, haven't, I don't let things get to me. But yes, because now my face is known all over the place. So that gives you a chance to kind of, well, you, you don't want the celebrity from what I understand, really. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing about want. It is what it is. Yeah, that's true. So you don't consider yourself a star, but do you consider yourself a hero? No, I'm going a man with testicles that did what he had to do. Just had to do, I mean, it was just what anybody would have done? Is that no. how you kind of feel about I mean, it? I met some spineless men in my life, so <laughs> only what I would have done. So how, what do you consider yourself? A do to do what he had to do. American citizen? I pay taxes, just... sure. Didn't join the Taliban no time soon. Not thinking about it, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it, it was one of your quotes or something that God puts you in the wrong place at the right time. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how you feel about it? Oh, yeah. So... You've had a lot of interviews, I know. 
And in your book, you describe Ariel Castro as just a regular guy, just everyday normal person who lived next door. Right. So um, you, there really was no way to tell what was going on, was there? And I kicked myself in the butt every day since then. Like, how could you not see something? Yeah. You well, talk to this dude, and you don't see nothing. And then you got to think, oh, wait, I was there a year, and th there were people that had been there decades, and they ain't seen nothing either. Mm-hmm. So do the math. So how was he in the neighborhood? He was a uh, neighbor. You need some money, give it to you. you need your kids watch you, watch them. Uh, he help out. If he cooked, he offered you some food. Obviously, we found out later that that wasn't even his cooking. Oh, really? So, were there anything when you look back at it that you say, man, I should have noticed these were kind of weird things? Nothing? Wow. That For makes really it... thinking. Won't get you nowhere, so let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, so don't even go there. Right. Um, now, you wrote about the rescue in your book, but you also wrote about how you ended up on that street, in that house, um, at that time. So you really didn't sugarcoat your background. You really kind of laid it out as it was. Why did you decide to kind of let that darker side of your life out? Because this is my way of having fun with critics. <laughs> really? See, if you, if, if you speculate, well, you don't get nowhere. You just speculate, you know what I mean? Come on now. This is the real world, right? Mm -hmm. So my book is a reality because it's real. So now when people read it, if you're not illiterate and with comprehension, you'd be like, oh, well, there's not much we can say now because he exposed everything. Mm -hmm. Darn him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So from writing the book, I mean, I, you, you let out a lot of information about your past and, and abusive relationships and stuff, and I think trying to help people really kind of get through something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, you any you words of lesson. wisdom? Uh, uh, go with God, really, because, you know, well, what can you tell a human that they're actually going to listen to? I mean, humans are stupid. So you just go with a higher entity, mm -hmm. hope it works. Well, it's, that's good advice, that's, I think, yeah, everybody. Yeah, just, that, <laughs> that's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> the story of the rescue of Amanda Berry, Gina de Jesus, and Michelle Knight is fascinating, and so is the life of the man who made it happen. To read all about it, use the informa ooh, ooh, information that's coming up next. My thanks to Charles Ramsey for being here today. Oh, well, thank you, baby. Thank you. Appreciate it. To order Charles Ramsey's Dead Giveaway, call Gray & Company Publishers at 1-800-915-3609 or log on to www.grayco.com. Next, tips to help your parent avoid a gold digger's clutches. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance, because we're going to list all of that information again. Then we'll be back with golden advice about protecting your parent from a gold digger. Does this situation sound familiar? Your dad, a widower, is dating a woman 20 years younger. Or your mom, who's been divorced, suddenly is spending a lot of time with a man you know very little about. 
Your parent has been targeted by a gold digger who's just after his money, you think? Here to explain the warning signs and to provide some tips to protect your parent is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. So, um, what are the warning signs if you think your mom or dad has been ensnared by a gold digger? Well, first, most of the time that's not an issue. Most of the time, presumably, they're, they're, they're a nice person and your parent, you know, obviously is entitled to some happiness, but once in a while, you have so, uh, something that's going on and, and you ought to be aware of it and look for certain signs. You know, number one, if all of a sudden this person, you know, early on is spending a tremendous amount of time with your parent. Or number two, in combination, they might cut your parents off from family and friends. Or they change some of the economics. You know, maybe they've gone on the parent's bank account, or they've changed the parent's will, or the financial power of attorney, that's a big important document. All of a sudden they've been named on that document. Those are all signs that you know something's going on. Okay, so what should we do if we suspect there's a problem? Well, you know, probably the first thing is just you know, get to know this person. Sit down and, and, and converse with them, try to get a little idea on their background. And then if you have any suspicions, maybe then you know, do a little background search. See if you can find out more about this person, see if anything's going on. Okay, is there any kind of legal steps we can take to, pretend, to protect a parent? Well, you know, first of all, why don't you check to see uh, if the parent has made any changes to the documents. You know, if, they've, if all of a sudden the parent has changed the will or the power of attorney or the bank accounts, those sort of things that I talked about. If they've done that, then you ought to sit down with the parent and, and try to figure out what's going on. Why did they make that change? And then if you're really uncomfortable with that, because sometimes it's hard mm -hmm. for the child to do that, then maybe what they do is set up an appointment with an attorney, an elder law attorney, someone who's familiar with these sort of scenarios, and then that could be the independent person looking at the situation and maybe giving the proper advice. How about if my parent isn't really thinking straight? Well, what you need to do then, if, if you really think your parent is, is uh, in, you know, not thinking straight, not as competent as they used to be or competent at all, that's a, you know, an open opportunity for someone to take advantage of that. Have them meet with a doctor. See if the doctor comes back with an you know, evaluation. If they do come back and say the parent is no longer competent, then you might have to go seek a guardianship to protect the parent. Okay, wow. As your parent ages, stay in close contact. That's the best protection from a gold digger. But if a new friend appears on the scene and you suspect evil intentions, follow Mike's advice. And if you have any questions, give Mike a call. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-888. 236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.bssplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, we'll reveal the five lifestyle changes that helped a woman lose 70 pounds. They could help you too. Then, do you have an inner artist? We'll show you the conclusion that creativity can enhance aging. Plus, we'll tell you the top tips for terrific-looking teeth. Until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.